Tell me something. What do you think about the Most High? Um. He's awesome, isn't he? Yes. He's our creator. Yes. And who is his son? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High. You know you're a daughter of the Most High? No. You are? You're a daughter of the Most High? Well, you he are, created you. You're a daughter of Zion. You're a Hebrew Israelite. That's who you are. That's who you, you are, be. You're a daughter. I'm his daughter. He's my father. Your father. I mean, I know I'm your father by flesh. That's why she's looking at you like mm -hmm. that. But he's your heavenly father. That's right. <laughs> oh. There she is, Ruben. Father Yah, today is your day. We humbly come before you to pray for understanding with the book of Hebrews chapter 8. Father, we see that the earthly things are a shadow of the heavenly things. Your servants saw visions. They walked in the strength of your power. Father, Give your children today strength and power in these last days. Make us see. We have a high priest. Forgive our sins. And it is in his name that we pray. Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Shalom, Israel. It is evident that our Lord, the Son of the Highest, that He sprang out of Judah, out of the tribe of Judah. It is evident that He was not a Greek, that He was not a Roman. He was not an Arab man. He was not an Asian man. He spoke Hebrew, and it is evident that He sprang out of the tribe of Judah. It is far more evident that he comes in the order of Melchizedek, who had no mother, who had no father. He had no earthly parents, no beginning of life, and no end of days. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8. Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Our Lord, Yahawashai, he is the high priest who is in the heavens. He sits at the right hand of the Father. The scriptures is saying that this is the main point of the things that we have been speaking of. Our Lord, Yahawashai, is our high priest, and he sits at the right hand of the Father 
in the heavens. Imagine Israel, if you are going for a particular job and you are friends of the son of the owner and that son goes before his father who owns that business, who owns that company in your behalf. We have such an high priest who sits at the right hand of our Father in the heavens, his Son. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Those earthly priests, those Levitical priests, they were ministers or servants in that earthly temple under Moses. But this Yahawashai, he is a minister of the sanctuary in the heavens for us, Israel. Verse 3, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 3. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Those earthly priests, they went before your father with gifts and with offerings to make atonement for your sins, to make things right between you and your father. Our Lord Yahawashai, in the same way, in the heavens, is an offering for us to the Most High Yah. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 4. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. There were earthly priests, but this priest is in the heavens. This is what the scriptures are saying. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moshe was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. Israel, that earthly tabernacle or temple or sanctuary was nothing more than a shadow of the heavenly temple, the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly sanctuary. When Moshe was on the mount and he was speaking unto Yah, the scripture says, see, make all things according to the pattern that was shown unto thee. Moshe had visions of heaven, just as Yaquanon had visions of heaven. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hell. Yaquanon was having visions of heaven. The heavens opened up, and he saw the temple of Yah in heaven just as there is an earthly temple when most when moshe walked this earth and there was an earthly priesthood there is also a heavenly priesthood and a heavenly temple moshe saw it yaquanon he saw it and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament just as there was an ark on the earthly temple or in the earthly temple so too is the ark of the covenant of the testament in heaven Yaquanon saw it when Moshe built that earthly temple and he put an ark in the most holy place with two cherubims he was shown the pattern of the things in heaven Inside of the ark is the testament, the two tables of stone written with the finger 
of God. Just as there is the word of God on the earth, the word of God is also in the heavens. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews and we're going to read chapter 1, verse 7. The earthly things are a shadow of the heavenly things. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. And of the angels he saith, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire? In that earthly temple that the children of Israel built in the wilderness, there was a menorah, and it has seven flames of fire. In the heavens, seven angels go in and out before the throne of Yah. We read this in the book of Tobit. And the scripture says that they bring and they deliver your prayers before the Most High. These seven angels are ministers as flames of fire represented by the menorah in that earthly temple. The earthly things are nothing more than a shadow of the heavenly things, Israel. Let's go back to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the hearts of God when Moshe built that earthly temple There was a brass laver when you entered into the temple. This is where the priest bathed before going into the sanctuary, before going into the most holy place. This brass laver is represented just as the sea of glass that is in the heavens before you go before Yah's throne. The earthly things are nothing more than a shadow of the heavenly things. When the Most High showed Moshe the pattern of the things that he wanted in the temple here on the earth, in that wilderness, they represented what is in heaven. Remember, Israel, that in the Lord's Prayer, the scripture says, Our Father, which art in heaven, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Remember, Israel, that the scripture says that what you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and what you loose on the earth is loosed in heaven. For you, Israel, have power with Yah. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. earthly things are a shadow of the heavenly things. Hebrews chapter 8. We'll pick it up at verse 6. Let's 
But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Our Lord Yahawashai has a more excellent ministry. That earthly priesthood was nothing more than a shadow. It was nothing more than a shadow of the heavenly priesthood. Our Lord Yahawashai is the high priest who goes before us with his father in heaven. We have a better testament. We have a better covenant. He is a better mediator. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. If that first covenant was faultless, there would be no need for the Son of God to come in the order of Melchizedek. Our Father knew in advance that that earthly priesthood would be corrupted. And from the beginning, he established a perfect priesthood in our Lord, Yahawashai. That earthly priesthood and that earthly temple was nothing more than a shadow of what is in heaven. Verse 8, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Yisrael and with the house of Yehuda. There is no spiritual Israel. Our Lord has not cast away his people. The new covenant that is to come will be made with the children of Israel, with the house of Yisrael and the house of Yehuda, the two kingdoms. Jeremiah is a prophet of the Most High Yah. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Let us see where the book of Hebrews is quoting from. Let us see who the new covenant is for. Let us see if the Heavenly Father Yah has cast away his people. Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Yisrael and with the house of Yehuda, not according to that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation before me forever. 
Thus saith Yahweh, if heaven can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all seed of Yisrael for all that they have done, saith Yahweh. Just as we read in the book of Hebrews, the days shall come when our Father shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. This is not a spiritual Israel. This is the people of the book. This is a bloodline. This is the children who were born from the womb. Our Father said that they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. And no more will you have to teach every man and every woman the laws of God, because we're all going to know the Most High God. It shall be written on our hearts, which is in our mind. Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, who gives the sun for a light by the day, and who gives the moon for light by night, and who gives the ordinances of the sun, the moon, and all the stars. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me. Our Heavenly Father is saying that if you look up in the sky and you see the sun, if you look up in the sky and you see the moon at night, if you look up in the sky and you see all the laws that govern the universe, the stars, the sun, the moon, you see those things, then you shall know that the children of Israel are still my people. If you look up and you don't see the sun and you don't see the moon and you don't see the stars and all the laws that govern the things that are in the heavens, if that is no more, then my children will be no more. As long as you see those things, the children of Israel will always be my people. children of Israel will always be the people of the Most High, Yahweh. Let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 9. Let's pick it right back up at verse 8 again. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. that he saith a new covenant a new covenant he hath made for the first old now that which decayeth and wax and waxeth old is ready to vanish away
our Lord Yahweh Shai. He is a better mediator for us. He goes before the Most High Yah in the heavens and is an advocate for us, Israel. How special are you? This new covenant is for the children of the Most High Yah. This is not a spiritual Israel, but by the blood and from the womb. As long as you see the ordinances and the laws that govern the universe, you see the sun, and you see the moon, and you see the stars, the children of Israel will always be the people of the Most High Yah. Notice that he said that they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least unto the greatest. The way that we act today, Israel, we may as well get down on all fours and crawl like an animal, because that's what many of our people act like as if they have no law, no respect for law, no respect for the laws of the Most High Yah. The fourth just passed and many of our people, as I was traveling, many of our people were out celebrating that day. When you ask them about the laws of Yah or when you ask them about the feast days, the holy days that are written in the scriptures, they have no time they have no money, they have no energy. But when it comes to the holidays of man, they have plenty of time, they have plenty of money, and they have plenty of energy. Most of our people today have no heart for the Heavenly Father, Yah, and they have no respect for His laws. But the day is coming, per the scriptures, that the children of the Most High Yah will have His laws written in their minds and will have His laws written in their hearts. They will all know me, the scripture says, Israel. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their inequities will I remember no more. I don't know about you, Israel but I need forgiveness from our Heavenly Father. What a wonder and a joy to know that our Father said that He will be merciful to our unrighteousness and that He would forgive our sins and that He would remember them no more. Our Lord Shai is a better mediator for a better covenant. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 8. Shabbat Shalom.